Hi everyone, this is Mick from Sneaks and Ball PH and today we have a detailed review on the Air Jordan 1 OG High Patina. To start things off, even though everyone calls these the Jordan 1 Patinas, you do see it on official sites as the Air Jordan 1 OG Highlight Army. And it also makes sense from the standpoint that all of the colors you see here are colors you'd pretty much see in an army setting because you do have that gray, that black, and that bronze or brown. So definitely some army vibes there. However, a lot of people do call these the Patinas as well. And that's because of all the bronze portions on the shoe. If you look at the shoe, you do see this sort of distressed look on the bronze parts. And that's to mimic how metals actually patina. For those who aren't familiar with patina, it essentially is what happens to bronze or copper or other metals like that when they age and naturally discolor. This normally comes about as a result of oxidation, but they decided to take that patina theme and put it on the Jordan 1. Why exactly would they do it on the Jordan 1? Well, I'm not entirely sure. And Nike and Jordan brand didn't really explain it, so it was pretty much up to everyone else's interpretation. So one interpretation of why they did it like this is because, you know, you do have that back piece which resembles the shadow Jordan 1s. And then maybe they put this bronze on the front to kind of simulate how it would be if you let it age. But I'm not really sure about that because I don't think even if you had a pair of OG shadows that aged for like decades that it would turn out this color. But that is only one theory and the other theory is that this was actually made to sort of commemorate that statue of Michael Jordan outside the United Center. Which I feel like would have actually been a nice story to tell so I guess they missed an opportunity there. And the third theory is just a fun one from my friend Gio over at Unorthobox and he said this might actually be a colorway inspired by Deontay Wilder aka the Bronze Bomber because you know just the overall look of Deontay Wilder this kind of makes sense to be his colorway but anyway those were just three theories that I just threw out there and it's just unfortunate that I as well as many others just had to like think of stuff because Jordan Brand didn't really say much about this shoe it wasn't also something on most people's radars and it just kind of leaked a few months before the release so it did catch people off guard a little bit it also started getting a little bit of hype before the release date and I'm not really sure why why that was because as I said there's no history behind the shoe. The colorway is okay in my opinion but it's really nothing great and I guess people did realize that over time because I just saw the resale prices on these go down which of course is actually a good thing if you're someone who wants to get the shoe and rock it because you might just be able to get these on the resale market but for the retail price. So with all that out of the way I don't think there's much I can say else about the shoe so let's get into the tech specs on the Jordan 1 High Patina. For the traction, you do have that signature Jordan 1 outsole, and it's in black solid rubber. This traction is definitely one of the grippiest that you can find. So whether you use these on court or you use these just for walking around casually, it's also an 80 shoe so the durability is also on point. Another benefit to this colorway in terms of the traction is that you do have black rubber all throughout, which will definitely appear cleaner for a longer time and show less wear. Then for the cushion, you do have a rubber cup sole with an EVA wedge here at the heel. The Jordan 1 is a shoe from 1984 so you really can't expect much from the cushion department but it is very neutral and low to the ground. Of course, if you want a little bit more comfort for walking around or if you actually want to play in these, you'd be better off getting a third party insole. There are definitely a lot of good brands out there and it really depends on what kind of cushion feel you want. My personal favorite would be those insoles with crash pads in the forefoot and heel. However, you do have ones with gel, you also have some off-brand ones that have stuff that looks like zoom or boost and there's also more expensive ones where they actually 3d scan your foot to make sure that it's right for you so you definitely have a lot of third-party options if you want to beef up the cushion on the Jordan 1 then for the materials just like the University blue Jordan 1s that released I think a month ago you have really good and premium feeling materials on the Jordan 1 high patina you have this black tumbled leather here on the top of the forefoot plus in the midfoot and the ankle collar that leather is nice and soft all throughout however one curious thing is that the tumble is different different on the midfoot and ankle collar when you compare it to the tumble on the toe. It does feel pretty similar in hand though, it's just I find it interesting that they changed up the tumble. So I think they probably used a certain batch for the midfoot and ankle and a different one for the leather on the toe. Then you also have some more leather here on the toe rand, here at the forefoot, here at the ice areas and the Nike swooshes. 
This leather does have that distressed look and it also has that patina vibe and it's actually surprisingly soft. The reason why I do say it's kind of surprising that it's this soft is because most of the time when we see leathers with a metallic sheen on it or like a bronze, silver, or gold look to it, it tends to feel a lot stiffer. But with this Jordan 1 patina, they were able to achieve that distressed bronze look while still keeping that leather nice and soft. Those overlays do make use of thick cuts as well and it just really gives the shoe a premium feel. Then here at the heel portion of the shoe, you have this light gray, which is made of this very short hair suede. That suede is a very thick cut as well and is soft to the touch and overall the materials on the shoe are just really premium and surprisingly enough they didn't cheap out on anything. Then lastly you do have your signature Jordan 1 nylon tongue and those classic flat laces. Then for fit and sizing I did go with the size 10 and it fits me perfectly well. I do normally wear my Jordan 1s with the laces just dangling since I do have quite thick legs and going with my true size actually allows me to wear the shoe untied without it feeling like it's gonna fly off my feet. You can also opt for a looser fit by going up half a size however I don't really prefer that but if you do like your shoes to fit a little bit roomy then you can definitely do so. So my recommendation is that whether you have narrow feet, normal feet or wide feet go through the size then if you want a little bit more of a loose or relaxed fit then you can definitely go up half a size if you wish. Then for your aesthetic details you do have your solid black rubber outsole with your Nike branding here at the midfoot. Then moving on to the midsole that cup sole is painted in white and I really appreciate it that they left this white because otherwise I think the shoe would have looked more boot like and a little too dark because you didn't have that pop of white. Since you have that black leather on the toe, the midfoot, and the ankle collar, as well as on the nylon tongue and sock liner. Then you have that Jordan 1 shadow inspired light gray back with this black wings logo on the lateral side of the ankle. Then of course you have the main draw of the shoe which is the bronze which has that very nice patina look. They did a pretty good job approximating that patina on most like bronze statues and I do think this patina pattern would be different for every pair just like how every pair of Jordan 3s with that cement print are different from each other. Then for the lace options of the shoe it does come with black laces out of the box but they also come with mint green laces in the box however I feel like that's a weird touch unless of course you just want that splash of color. You actually have that same mint green on the Nike Air on the tongue and it's on this patch with very exaggerated stitching. This is probably my least favorite aesthetic detail on the shoe because I don't know why they had to stitch it this way and I also don't know why the hell there's mint green on the shoe and I don't really know why they would include mint green laces but they chose to do that and I'm never gonna wear these with mint green laces anyway so at least they do come with the black ones. Then for the overall aesthetics in my personal opinion the Jordan 1 patina looks better in person than online however this still doesn't feel like a pair that I would rock because for me there is too much dark color on the shoe because you have that black leather throughout the upper, that muted gray here at the back, and that aged bronze on the overlays. The only pop of light color you get is with that white midsole and that random mint green that I just really don't like. So in my opinion, the aesthetics of the shoe are just okay. It's not really something that I like or that I will rock. But of course, they each his own and I know a lot of people that would prefer black and brown shoes. So for those people, this might be the shoe for you. Then for the price, the Jordan 1 OG High Patina retails for 8,095 pesos here in the Philippines or 170 US dollars. This is pretty much the standard price of Jordan 1 Highs and when you consider just how good the materials are and if you are a person that likes this colorway, I think it's pretty worth the buy. However, of course, I did say that there was some weird hype going around the shoe once it released so naturally, resellers were quick to pounce. These don't resell for crazy prices though and they are normally I think at around 11,000 to 12,000 pesos which is around 205 to 210 US dollars. But of course, if you do want the shoe for almost retail then I suggest you wait until the resale prices go down. I do think that they will go down soon enough because I don't see a lot of people buying from the resellers and I did sort of expect that because for one it's a pretty dark colored Air Jordan 1 and because this Patina Jordan 1 doesn't really have any history behind it and Jordan brand didn't really do a good job telling any story about the shoe so people didn't really gravitate towards it. However if you do like these and you weren't able to get them from retail I would just advise you to wait since I do think that the resale prices on these are going down. But I did get my pair over at Titan because of a raffle so once again big shout outs to them. So there you have it guys that was my detailed review on the Air Jordan 1 OG High Platina. If you liked the video please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below and if you have any comments, questions or any suggestions for future videos please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then I'll also be leaving a link to the SNBPH Sneaker Hunters Facebook group down below so please do check it out we talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit and that's also where I course my monthly giveaways. Then if you haven't already yet, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. It would help us out a lot. Here's Sneak Symbol, PH.